Hey, uh, we are finishing a series in 2 Timothy today, and uh, if, if you would like to turn there, it's 2 Timothy 4. We're going to be looking at verses 6 through 12. Uh, last week, we saw uh, Pastor Mark tr- really challenge us on preaching the word, and not just, you know, you know, guys up here preaching the word, that we are to preach the word uh, in our lives every day. And so uh, hopefully you took that to heart this week. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, today what we're really seeing is that the Apostle Paul is, is really challenging us to finish strong. And so uh, some of us are here today, and, and, and the thought of finishing strong, and I'm kind of looking over here to some, maybe some of our youth, uh, not that some of you aren't young, okay? Um, get myself in trouble first thing. It's not good. Uh, but the, the thought of finishing strong isn't even in our minds at this point. Uh, we're young. We're vibrant. You know, we're thinking that we've got the world by the tail, and, and this this idea of the finish line isn't even in our thought process. It just seems so far off. And then there's others of us uh, this morning that uh, we have a few years under our belt. And uh, uh, wisdom tells us that the world has kicked our tail and we just hope to finish. Okay? And so really, Paul has a word for uh, both of us today. Uh, and, and so let's, let's pick up with verse 6 of chapter 4. It says, For... I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. He goes on, verse 9, is some personal remarks. He says, do your best to come to me quickly, for Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Cretans has gone to Galatia and Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, because he is helpful to me in in my ministry. I sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak That I left with Corpus in Troas and my scroll, especially the parchments. Alexander, the metal worker, did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will repay him for what he has done. You too should be on your guard against him because he strongly opposed our message. At my first defense, no one came to support. But everyone deserted me. May May it not be held against him. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet Priscilla and Aquila and the household of Onesiphorus. Erastus stayed, with, stayed in Corinth, and I left Trophimius sick in Miletus. Do your best to get here before winter. Eubulus greets you, and so do Pudens, Linus, Claudia, and all the brothers and sisters. The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you all. So we, we read a passage like that, a lot of times we're like going, good grief, how are we supposed to figure that all out, you know? And so uh, as, as uh, our team kind of studied on this this week, we, we came up with a few different ideas. But, but really the, the big idea here, really what, what I feel what, what Paul wants us to go away with is no matter how hard life gets, no, ma- no matter how hard ministry gets, keeping our eyes on Christ and his return gives us perspective on present difficulties. Ultimately, it gives us the ability to finish strong. And that is the title of the message today, Finishing Strong. So how can we finish strong? And, and, and really what Paul does here in verses uh, 6 through 8 is he kind of gives us this, this big picture. And really what I feel he's saying here, number one, is living for Jesus is worth it. Living for Jesus, serving Christ is worth it. Because he says, you know what, a prize is waiting, a crown of righteousness is waiting for me. What a beautiful thing. 
that when, when we leave this planet, those here that, that have a relationship with the loving, living God, that we will be ushered into the presence of God. I'm just so looking forward to that. So looking forward to that. 1 Corinthians 9.24 says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? And check this out. What does Paul say? So run in such a way to get the prize. So there's a challenge today. Paul's really challenging us to run in such a way to get the prize. What he's saying is finish strong. So what you're going to hear today, the theme is what? Finish strong. Even if you're young. All right? Even if you're older, more mature, finish strong. So as I was reading through this this week, it's like, man, how do I want to go out? So I'm going to throw that out to you. How do you want to go out? When your time is up, one of the things that we have to be ready, because no one really knows the time. It could be today that the Lord calls you home, no matter how old you are. It could be tomorrow. It could be 40 years from now. It could be 80 years from now. We don't know. Nobody knows the time. But how do you want to go out? Jesus is, is sharing a parable in Luke 12. And I, and I really think Paul understood this. And it's this parable of the rich man. And he's storing up all this stuff for himself. And, and, and Luke says this. He says, you fool, this very night, or Jesus says this, and Luke's writing it down. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? See, when? Nobody knows. Also, how about the second coming of Christ? You know, uh, when is Jesus coming back? Are you prepared? Are you ready to go? Matthew 25, 13 says, therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. Are you ready? How do you want to go out? When your time is up, either when God takes you home or Jesus comes back, how do you want to be ready? Do you want to be there? You want to be finishing strong? That would be my heart. First Thessalonians 5, 2 says, For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. So I guess the challenge that I have for all of us is live life every day to its fullest but live it, live it like it's your last. As a coach, I, I challenge students a lot to play every game like it's their last game. Because it could. It could be. You never know. It could be a season injury or, or an injury that's going to not allow you to, to ever play a, a sport again. You just never know. And I really believe it's the same type of thing here. Live every day. Like it's your last. And I believe Paul, that's what he was doing. He knew, he knew it was over. I fought the good fight. I finished the race. He finished strong. He kept the faith. He didn't fall away from God. A lot of times I think we have a tendency to trip and fall. And then we say, oh, I'll never get up. I, I can't do this Christian life. It's so hard. And Paul gives us an example. Go, no, just come on. You can finish strong. Get back up. Get back up. You know why? Because living for Jesus is worth it. Moving on, number two. Verses 9 through 16. And you look at all this, and it says, come to me quickly. You know, Demas kind of bailed on him, and, and Cretans has gone to Galatia, probably doing some ministry, and Titus is doing ministry, and, you know, Luke's still with him. But I really think what, what we see here today is there's going to be good times and bad times in life and in ministry. There's a funny, well, it's not really funny. It's funny to me. It probably wasn't funny at the time. But in Acts 20, uh, we, we see a story where Paul is preaching. He's going to leave the next day. And, and so he's just kind of, uh, you know, sharing the word and, and talking. It says he talked until midnight. And then he's sitting there talking. And, and, and it says that there's this young man seated in the window. You guys remember the story? And, and, and I don't know if, if Paul's preaching was just boring, but this kid just falls asleep. Hopefully none of you guys are asleep this morning. and You look awake. This is good. This is good. So this young man falls asleep, and it says he falls out of the third-story window. Okay? Um, man, that's a bad way to go right there. Uh, listen to a sermon, and you, and you fall out, and, and that's good. You know, some of you men, you have your wives that are able to, you know, kind of nudge you a little bit and keep you awake. But this kid, he's just gone. He falls out. 
and, and he dies. Okay, and so, again, this isn't, it isn't funny, but to me, it's, I just have a warped sense of humor. But anyway, so, you know, Paul just goes down, he stops his talking, he goes down and he, and he grabs this kid, and, he, and the kid obviously uh, says, hey, he's not, don't be alarmed, he's alive, he says. And then he went back upstairs, broke bread and ate, because that's what you do when you raise somebody back to, to life, I guess. And then it says, and after talking until daylight, so he just went back to teaching, uh, he left. And the people took the young man home alive. And, that, and then finally it tells us that the kid actually lived, and they were greatly comforted. See, that, that's good times in ministry, right? Whenever you can go uh, lay hands on somebody and they come back to life, that's a good time in ministry, no doubt about it. <laughs> well, and I think Mark, uh, Pastor Mark shared this a couple weeks ago. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, when you look at the life of Paul again, it says this. It says, you know, five times I received from the Jews 40 lashes minus one. Because if you receive more than 39 lashes, usually you died. So 30, or 40 minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false brothers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face the daily pressure of my concern for all the churches. Now, that's a bad day, a bad life, okay? But Paul would still say, look, I've gone through all that stuff, and you know what? It's still worth it. I still love Jesus. I'm finishing strong. Now, I don't know if any of us will ever go through that kind of, of um, tough times in life. Some of you probably have um, gone through some pretty rough things. But Paul's saying finish strong. Put your faith in Christ. You can do it. You can make it. As a, as a young pastor several years ago in a different church, um, it, I went through some rough times in ministry. Learning, you know, a lot of times learning ministry can be kind of tough. Uh, learning how to deal with people is, is kind of stuff, uh, kind of tough. But, um, you know, looking back on it now, you know, I really see how God used it in my life to kind of thicken my skin a little bit, you know, kind of help me to be emotionally tougher uh, that kind of thing. But I must admit, it was pretty frustrating. Uh, and I couldn't, it was tough because I couldn't believe that so-called godly people could treat somebody so bad. You know? It was, it was a rough time. But I learned a lot about how to deal with, with hard people, difficult people. And how to love them in Jesus, no matter what the circumstances. It ended up becoming a very, a very good time in my life, even though it seemed like a bad time. See, God always has the big picture. God always has our back. You know, and the thing that I realized from all that is that, you know what? People are going to let me down, but Jesus will never let me down. And the other thing I learned about is I can't please everybody. So I, I, I just need to please the Lord. And, and hopefully that would be encouraging to you to realize that we can't please everybody. But what is God calling you to do? And whatever God is calling you to do, get after it. Go do it. Let the Lord just work through you. And don't put your faith in people. Put your faith in Christ. Now, on the other hand, I've had a, a lot of great experiences in ministry. Uh, the opportunity of seeing people come to Jesus. You know, you preach the word or you just live in, live in life for Christ. And someone's like, the light goes on and, and the Holy Spirit touches their heart. And they realize that they need a Savior. And, and, and they just they receive the gift of eternal life. I mean, those are awesome times, are they not? You guys have experienced those? Those are awesome times. Uh, for me, you know, the opportunity to go on retreats and, and camps and, and go into Mexico, a missions adventure. Uh, those are awesome times. And, and I wouldn't change those times for the world because they are just so cool. Weekly corporate worship. Man, those are good times. And I praise God for that. So understand, yeah, we're going to have good times, we're going to have bad times in ministry. But at the end of the day, keep Christ as your focus. And it's all going to come together. It's all going to be good. Why? Because God is good. And then wrapping up the, the, this last part of it here, there's some final greetings that he does. And, and then um, 
the thing that I really want us to go home with today is this. And that's number three, is that Jesus is the perfect eternal friend, which allows believers to love others in any situation. Jesus is the perfect eternal friend, which allows believers to love others in any situation. And the key passages that I want to look at are 17 and 18. He says, but the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength. Guys, no matter what's going on in your life, the Lord is going to be your friend. He's going to stand at your side. He's going to give you strength. So that through me, he says, Paul, the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. Isn't that awesome? That even at the end of his life, I mean, Paul's about ready to be executed. Even at the end of his life, he's, he's totally excited that he's going to be able to share the gospel to the Gentiles. That he can continue to preach the word. So they might hear it. And then he says that I was delivered from the lion's mouth. Literally, you know, he was, he was about to be thrown to the lions many, many times. Verse 18 says, the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack. And will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. You know, uh, Pastor Doug and I were studying this passage together this week. And, and one of the things that really came out of that is, and one of the things that he asked me is, he just goes, do you view rescue, this idea of being rescued the same way Paul did here? Because when I think about rescue, a lot of times I think about being taken out of a situation, being taken out of the hurt and the pain. Uh, I don't want to go through that anymore. You know, I just want my life to be happy again. I want everything to be good. Um, but you guys, did you catch what Paul was saying here? The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack. Yes. And will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. Hmm. So it's not about being here. See, what I see here is Paul gives us what it's supposed to look like to be a mature follower of Christ. To understand that we are just passing through this life, this planet. We are here for just a short time. But we're passing through. We're moving on. So, so a, a mature believer, someone that's really growing in Christ will begin to understand that. And that we're here to be used by God. We're to be the body of Christ, the body of Jesus, to, to go and to preach the gospel and to love on people and to care for people. And allow them to come to Jesus. Obviously, we are just the speaking part. It's the Holy Spirit that's laying down conviction of someone's heart. And maybe you're here today. In your heart, you're, start, you're just like, ah, I'm struggling. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's the Holy Spirit tugging at you. Say, man, your life is a mess. And Jesus wants to come and give you peace and hope. Doesn't mean that everything's going to be fixed overnight. But you know what? All of a sudden, it's not about the here and now. It's about where we're going. It's about having a proper perspective of eternity. You know, as a non-believer, this earth is the best it gets. But we in here that are believers, this is the worst it gets. It only gets better from here, amen? I love it. It only gets better from here. Hebrews 12 says this. It says, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful. And so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. I think we've gotten away from that in our culture. For our God is a consuming fire. Keep on loving each other as brothers. Sisters, I'll add that in there. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, people 
have entertained angels without even knowing it. That'd be kind of cool. Remember those in prison as if you were their fellow prisoner and those who are mistreated as if you yourself were suffering. You catching it? We're loving the body. We're loving on one another. We care for one another. Verse 4, marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, and here's the big picture, here's with a promise, never will I leave you. Man, if you're here today and you know Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior, he says never will he leave you. That is a great promise. That's something we can, we can you know, go to the bank on, so to speak. I mean, that's something we can hold on to. Thank you, Lord, for that. So my question is, for those here today that may not know Jesus, do you desire to be rescued today and it's a simple prayer it's just a simple prayer it's, and, and if this is you just pray this in right now it's just dear Lord Jesus I know I'm a sinner and I realize that that word sinner isn't real popular in our culture today but God I am broken and I need you thank you for sending your son Jesus to pay the ultimate price, who came and gave up his godness to be a man, to live a perfect life that would pay the ultimate price for sin and be to be my savior. And so, Lord, right now, I want to invite Jesus into my heart to be my savior, to be my Lord. And so, Father, I pray right now that, that you will give me the boldness to talk with somebody afterwards, to, <laughs> God, you'll give me the boldness to, to come forward at the end of the service, to get connected into a home group, to get connected into a small group, a life group, God. Thank you, Jesus. If you're here and you prayed that today, 2 Corinthians 5 says that you are now a new creation. And a reminder to all of us that know Jesus that we are a new creation. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So whatever you're dealing with today, our hope is in Christ. I want to finish with this little visual. This is in my office. And um, I don't know if you can see the look on Jesus' face. in my heart that Jesus would say well done well done good and faithful servant can I encourage you with that today encourage you with this visual as you enter into his presence no matter when that will be that you finish strong and he embraces you and he's saying well Lord, we thank you for today. We praise you for today. God, be glorified in our lives. In Christ's name.